Welcome to Politics Done Right on the internet as well. Anyhow, um, there's a race that many of us uh, think may not, that we should probably have no interest in, but we really should. And that is a race in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania for mayorship, the mayor of Philadelphia. And there is a young woman running. Her name is Helen Gim. And Helen Gim is, has, has run likely one of the best progressive races I've seen in this city. She created a coalition of everybody in, in uh, Philadelphia. Her, her, her campaign looked like America. The voice that she put out sounded like America. She went out there and told folks, these are our problems. But she didn't just tell folks, these are the problems that we have as a society. But she went out there and the solutions that she spoke about were completely inclusive of everybody. That, was Hel- that is Helen Gim. And the last polls that came out in uh, Philadelphia, it shows that she is leading the race. Uh, I, I, on Tuesday, we'll find out how successful she was. But last night, AOC, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Bernie Sanders, the uh, Maurice uh, Maurice uh, Baker, what is this? Maurice from the who runs the Working People's Party. Uh, all of them went out there to support her because it really looks like for the first time. Uh, we we're gonna have a we're gonna have an Asian American woman uh, that wins in the city, basically because she came with a progressive message that included absolutely everybody, and she united a whole bunch of different factions within that city. She's leading so far from the last polls that I saw by three points. I met this woman in I think it was Arizona at the Netroots convention and she was tiny woman and she was following Nina Turner in a speech. And, you know, I, for those of you who know Nina Turner, she is the former uh, Ohio state Ohio Senator that has a, I mean, she's a, she's a hell of an orator. And so she came, Helen Gim is sitting there and, you know, we're all watching this, this thing. And, and, and Nina goes out there and gave a hell of a speech. And I'm, in my mind, I'm like, oh, my God, this poor young lady is going to come out. And, she, she, you know, she, she's going to just fall flat after we had a Nina Turner out there. And she came out there and blew, the, blew it out of the air. Tiny thing, blew it out of the air. So I ran over and I said, oh, we got to get an interview. And I interviewed her and we became friends from then on. And about... Six weeks ago, I guess it was or so, I interviewed her again for her to kind of tell us how she's running her campaign, et cetera, in uh, Philadelphia. And it seems like she's at the top of the heap and she may actually win. So um, we'll get her on again for KPFT when uh, after the election is all over. But if she pulls this through in a city where it would where she is an unlikely candidate to pull it all out a machine-driven city, and she comes with a progressive message, with a grassroots, a, a grassroots system, she would have proven what we have been talking about a long time. And that is, if you make sure and you show up and you are in the neighborhoods and you are around people, irrespective of the time of the year, doesn't have to be around election time. As long as you are out there engaging the people and letting the people know that you are there to support them, the people many times will reward you if what you're coming with they feel are solutions to their problems. And that is what uh, that is what we're we're. It looks like that is what we're seeing uh, with the population in Philadelphia. And if they go out and vote, it'll happen. And she will be, I repeat, she will be the template used all over the country when it comes to how can progressives all around the country, when there are spears coming at you from all sides, 
how can you win with a populist message that means something? So I am watching that race with the expectation that all of us here in Houston, in, in California, in Alabama are watching to see how you win, how you support the next generation, how you get things occurring. Anyhow, title of the show again, let corporations pay for inflation. MSM finally reports inflation is down. Katie Turr humanizes immigration. I'm going to go ahead and start it up with, uh, with, uh, Katie Tur and and immigration. I mean, think about this, folks. And by the way, the number is 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713-526-5738. Remember, you can listen to us on KPFT 90.1 FM, the airwaves. You can also uh, get the tune-in application from the Android or Apple Store and uh, tune us in by searching for KPFT. Or you can go to kpft.org, go to kpft.org and just uh, click the listen live. You can listen and stream us right there. Or if you want to watch the videos of all that we're doing as well, go ahead and go to facebook.com slash KPFT Houston. Again, that is KPFT, or I'm sorry, facebook.com slash KPFT Houston. If you want to listen on YouTube, of course, it is politicsdoneright.tv. Again, that is politicsdoneright.tv. Folks, I think you are going to enjoy both watching, seeing, etc. live. Please remember, we are still in fun drive mode, but we intend to have programming as we do fund drive, but I ask you so kindly to give us a call at 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713-526-5738. Hit extension number one to donate. Hit extension number two to come on air. And I want to have both of those folks. Please hit that extension to come, uh, extension one to come on air and extension or at extension one to donate. And also, if you have the word, uh, hit extension number two to come on air. I want to hear from you. I want to hear your point of view. That number again is 713-526-5738. I do 10 politics and right programs every week. Five streaming only and five live on air via KPFT 90.1 FM Houston that I stream as well. This endeavor is completely funded by you voluntarily. That is why I make sure to maintain consistency, dependability, and accuracy with my videos, podcasts, blogs, articles, news letters and books. We also have a newsletter that we put out for the show before the show every single night after we decide what we're going to cover. You can always prepare for the show. If you want to be able to, if you want to, that is, and just come on here, go to politicsdoneright.com slash newsletter, politicsdoneright.com slash newsletter. For the next few uh, day, for, you, for the next week and a few days, we will be fundraising to fund the station for the next quarter. To be sure, I will have a substantive and informative program even during said fund drive. My program, Politics and Right, must raise a minimum of $250 a day to cover this program. $250 a day, five days a week during this fund drive. So I ask you so kindly to call 713-526-5738, extension number one to support. And of course, I will call you out if you don't stop me from doing that. You know, you can tell a person or you can put that in the in the, when you go to kpft.org. I'll call your name and salute you for being a supporter of KPFT 90.1 FM. You guys are the ones making a difference. You can also go to kpft.org, hit the donate button and donate and tell us what you want, the, what we have here. You can get a Politics Done Right t-shirt for a hundred dollar contribution and uh, remember you don't have to pay for all of this all at once you can say you know what i am going to uh spread this over time you can do you can do however you want to do it to get that t-shirt that's a hundred dollar contribution alternatively you can also i i have this feature i just kind of threw it out there the other day and said you know what if 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 you give 250 dollars or above I'll take you to coffee and we can sit down, chat politics or chat whatever you want to do. 
And that is for 250 or more contribution. Remember, you don't have to do this all at once. You can also do this over time. Lastly, not well, not lastly, but a $40 contribution makes you a voting member of both the KPFT local station board, what, what occurs here at KPFT, as well as nationally, what occurs at the national. And, you know, we control about five huge stations as well as hundreds of affiliates. Uh, we we have this thing now going where, and I'm going to put that on the screen now, where if you want to get a brick with an insignia from you, your name, your your company, or or whatever that shows that you are a supporter of public radio, community radio, a $25 contribution will give you a four by eight block that will be either in a pathway on the wall or whatever that shows that you're a supporter of KPFT 90.1 FM. For a $50 a month contribution, you get a 8 by 8 block that we're going to put. And if you take a look at the screen right now, for those of you who are watching on YouTube, or for those of you who are watching on at the uh, the uh, the Facebook page, you can see what this looks like. It's really nice, and you are forever in insignia at KPFT 90.1 FM. Okay, let's. Uh, I think that's all over. I've done my little prelim of. I'll ask you guys a little bit later to support the program, but let's go ahead and get busy with what we're talking about today. All right. You know, it didn't materialize, folks. Title 42 is done. And everybody expected that rush to come from the backside, but it never did. And one of the reasons it didn't. It's something that I mentioned uh, when, uh, on, I, I think I did it on Steve Hunter's program, the Steve Hunter's show, um, you, you Talk, which comes on at 8 o'clock. Uh, we spoke about that where uh, people were wondering about all the immigration and all the, the things, you know, pe people have all kinds of ideas about it. Well, the reason, the reason I think it isn't occurring is the Biden administration under the auspices of the Vice President Kamala Harris. She went to Guatemala, Honduras, and uh, El Salvador, Nicaragua. And they actually, I, it, it's called the, the Golden di I don't remember, Diamond Triangle or, or whatever they call it. And worked on the issues that are causing these people to migrate, on, to take the risks that they take to migrate. And slowly made three point, I think it was three point two billion dollar investment, which is something should have been done a long time ago, to help mitigate the people coming over here. When people are in dire straits, they move, they move, and and when the dire straits is their entire country, they leave the country. Guess who else did that? The the pilgrims, other people looking for. I mean, they did it as well. When they were in dire straits in England, when they were in dire straits in Ireland, when they were in dire straits all over the world, people move to where they believe things can go right. They don't think about the borders of countries. They think about staying alive. They think about making their lives better. It's a natural human thing. And it's not that we didn't do it. The pilgrims did it. Jamestown occurred all over. People do it for different reasons. Interestingly, the people that are coming from Venezuela, Nicaragua, Guatemala, they're doing it because their lives are in dire straits and much of it is, was beyond their control. Much of it also was beyond their government's control. Much of it was under the auspices of policies that we as Americans and other Western countries inflicted on these third world countries. A good example, land reform in Guatemala. Uh, our our fruit companies, et cetera, went out there and they bought up the land and they prevent farmers from being able to be self-sustaining because they didn't want competition, et cetera. This happened many years ago, many decades ago. And what happened then? Because they didn't have control, uh, the, the local people didn't have control of their land and, and the, the general fruits or whatever the company was called was able to take over everything. Of course, it created problems. NAFTA created these types of problems where it displaced a lot of workers as well. And what are these people are going to do because of policies inflicted on them by, let's say, our government, which was pushed by our private corporations? What, what's the results? We get these types of migration. Now, again, these people are coming over here for a job. They want work. 
so that many a times they can send back money to where? Their families, right? The very things humans do. Now, let's, let's, let's step back a while. For those of you who are morally indignant about these guys breaking the laws to come to the United States, I want you all to self-reflect, all of us. I am, I am, a, I am a born, was a born Panamanian who emigrated here to the United States, who became a citizen, a naturalized citizen of the United States, and who understands that most people see America as the land of opportunity because of the way America markets itself worldwide. Most people that are born here that have never left here don't see that. We do. And that is when the pilgrims came over, they saw America as the place of milk and honey, etc. Now, the difference between now and then or the people that are coming now are not coming to conquer, are not coming to displace those that are already here. They're just coming for a job. And guess what America needs right now? A hell of a lot of labor for a hell of a lot of jobs that most Americans now believe they have grown out of wanting to do. And I'm not saying that the far, these foreigners coming into the country should be relegated to just these jobs that the born Americans don't want to do. But I'm saying, if anybody goes out with the, the, the fallacy into believing that bringing these people into the country is going to harm them, it's going to somehow make them less valuable, meaning your job as a, as a mechanical engineer, your job as a doctor, your job as a secretary, your job as... All these other professions is going to make it worse. It's the furthest thing that actually will occur because what it really does is enhance those jobs that are already here. If you have more people to serve, you need more of those other jobs as well. If you have more people here, it means those things that you, those fruits that you're going to need picked, those jobs in the factory that needs to be had right now. Or had it also means stabilization in prices, not because you're going to pay for cheap labor, but because you will have more economic activity in the country itself. But you know what? The politicians, that doesn't matter for them when they can use anything as a pawn, when they can use the immigrants, the other as a pawn, when they can use, uh, that these brown people coming over are, should really scare you as a pawn. Let me just let you know the numbers. The crime rate among those who come over here is less than the crime weight rate of the people proper. So that argument is false. That they're going to take your jobs, that argument is false. That they are somehow different, that argument is false. So... Folks who are talking immigration, who are scared of immigrants, who the politicians have allowed to fear and, and elect folks who are xenophobic. Please remember this. You've been had in more ways than one. You've been had because now it seems like you, it, it, they, they make it seem like you are an intolerant being that's how it seems across the west of the world. The land of opportunity has become an intolerant being. That's what your leaders have done to us. The next thing that it has done is it, it has lied to you by not having us accept the responsibility that the, the politicians we have elected and the, the, the corporations that steer them have gone throughout the world and inflicted havoc on populations. And in inflicting this havoc on populations are, are in fact the genesis, the ones who created what's occurring, the migration. I wish more folks followed that. But anyhow, what I want to do now, folks, is Katie Turp, she did a piece. And I had not heard 
this type of humanity, this, the story told with this type of humanity. And I said, my God, this mainstream media woman got it. So I want to play this for you. And then we'll take it on the other side. Let me cue that up. And here we go. The media is powerful and when used effectively can do good. Uh, we have allowed too long for politicians to use, uh, use the media, use us as pawns. I love what Katie Turr did here. She humanized appropriately the immigration situation as opposed to making it the punching ball that many on the right attempt to do. It is high time for us to learn very important in, uh, inconvenient truths. One, a lot of the, the immigration problems that we have now is because of policies that we have created that occurs around the world, specifically in Central America, Latin America, etc. Two, we do need immigrants to come out here and do a lot of the jobs right now that are left unfilled because Americans just won't do it. It would help the economy. And number three, when it comes to social security, these folks, we need a bigger base to support the baby boomers and others that are now really holding on to our social security system. So it's all in all a good thing. People are going to say, well, do it the legal way. Well, if the legal way has been failing and the corporations as they are right now want those folks, let me tell you, it's going right. Listen to Katie Turr, we'll take it on the other side. Much of this coverage can sometimes seem like it's being portrayed as a spectacle, as a crisis. Um, uh, but I do, I, I understand the security concerns that people have. Um, and I understand the resourcing concerns. Maybe there, people think there's not enough to go around in this country. Um, but I, I hope that you can, I hope that you can straighten that out for us, Jose. And I also hope that you can bring us back to, I mean, that you're showing us the, the families that are coming across that just want to work. I have a hard time um, because what something that's not expressed in this coverage a lot is that if you put yourself in the situation that they're in, if you did, if I did, we would be doing the exact same thing for our families. And so much of that humanity, people just trying to make a life for themselves, gets lost. And when you talk to economists in this country, and this is why this can be such a frustrating issue to cover it as just this political spectacle, economists say we need a bigger tax base. We need more people here contributing, paying taxes, so that we can pay Social Security going forward in the future. Because our birth rate is down. There are reasons to let more people in. I just wonder, do you hear those arguments ever, or is it all just this dehumanizing talk out there? Look, out here there is no dehumanizing talk because here the talk is of men, women, and children who have done the unimaginable to try and change their lot in life. And, and Katie, I just think, you know, let's take Venezuela, for example. It's a country that just over the past eight years, more than seven million people have been forced to leave that country. It's the second largest displacement of human beings ever in our history. Cuba has a, a dictatorship going now for 64 years. Haiti is undergoing a, a, a process by which there is no functioning government and violence is the law of the land. How do these people decide that it is better to leave that risking death than to stay one more day there. And you know what? You were just saying, what would we as parents not do for our children? But when you hear the, 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 uh, the horrible things that people go through, through the Darien jungles, and then their journey through Mexico it, to the man, woman, and child, they say to me, boy, as bad as the Darien jungles was, as bad as my life in Haiti, Cuba, Venezuela, Nicaragua, everywhere was, there's nothing worse than how we were treated and exploited in our journey through Mexico. Now they reach here with the dream of making a better life for their children. That, if you distill it, is what this is all about. Jose, thank you very much for reminding us of, of what it means to, to, to make that journey and the desperation you would need, the desperate straits you would need to be in to be willing to make that journey. And we've seen that image all morning of the, the father putting the baby in the suitcase to, to carry the baby, to wade through the river to carry the baby. You just don't do that unless you're desperate. Katie Turr nails it. Her humanity shows, uh, I, I wish more 
of the humanity of those who pur pur purport to be Christians, those who purport to believe in love, those who purport to believe in humanity would actually be humane themselves. But we should know better. There's nothing humane about those who simply use people as pawns for political cause. Absolutely nothing like those who use people as pawns for political cause. Anyhow, folks, please give us a call. 713-526-5738. The number's on the screen as well. 713-526-5738. Extension number two to come on air right away or hit extension number one to give a to give support for this program. Um, give me a, a couple of minutes to pitch before I continue with the program. 713-526-5738, extension number one. Folks, we need your support to keep this program on air. This program is responsible for bringing in $250 every day for the hour that it's on air so that we can cover our expensive for another quarter expenses for another quarter. So I ask you so kind of, does somebody want to go ahead and do the whole thing at once so that I can just shut up and keep on with the program? Please feel free to do so. That is a 250 contribution. We'll, we'll take care of this show for one hour. Uh, so please give us a call 713-526-5738 extension number one to donate and if you want to add to what we're discussing here on the program remember again we are very civil on this program we don't we don't argue we don't fight we discuss whether we agree or disagree 713-526-5738 you can hit the number two if you want to be on air number one again to contribute what will you get if you contribute well if you give a 40 dollar contribution you become a voting member of the pacifica network that's the entire network that governs these five major stations and hundreds of affiliate stations uh again a 40 dollar contribution gives you voting rights and um, if you decide that you want a, a, a politics done right t-shirt, would love to be walking around in Houston and see somebody with a politics done right t-shirt. Uh, that is a hundred dollar contribution. And for that hundred dollar contribution, you get a, a politics done right t-shirt with a KPFT logo on it. Please consider doing that. 713-526-5738. Extension numero one to donate extension number one to donate extension number two to come on air and i, I want to hear you got your voices on air as well folks please don't 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 sit back there thinking oh i don't want to call and talk because you know i, I don't I, I don't have the wherewithal to give right no no i want to hear from you as well 713-526-5738 extension number two uh, now, you can also give uh, uh, the, the the website, go to kpft.org. Again, that is kpft.org. Hit donate. And uh, when you select the, the first option to select what, what gifts you want, how much you want to give, please do remember to select Politics Done Right as the program you're supporting so that your contribution will be correctly attributed to this show so that management of this show can understand that, yes, we are paying our weight here. The people do support the program. 713-526-5738, extension number one to donate, extension number two to come on air. And by the way, folks, I want you guys to know that if you contribute right now, I will see it pop up on the screen and I will be more, more than happy to say, hey guys, thank you so kindly for supporting. And I call your name out and let folks know that you are in fact supporting the station with your contribution. 713-526-5738 extension number one to give extension number two to be on air or go to kpft.org kpft.org and you will be able to select the amount that you want to give and select politics then right as the show you're contributing to let's go ahead and bring johnny into the fold come on in johnny how are you doing today this morning Oh, I'm feeling much better. I had a moderate migraine yesterday. It popped up and I got rid of it. 
halfway through the night. So that was a very brief one. I guess this ginger is working. Yeah, well, I'm glad I'm glad to hear that because right now there's a whole lot of stuff in the air that's given all kind of people sinus problems. Howard had it himself. But anyway, talk to me, my brother. Yeah, but this was in sinus. This is migraine. This is way more serious. <laughs> I hear you, buddy. Um, I want to add to what Katie Turek said. I want to uh, back her up with some additional. Here's an argument that we hear all the time from Republicans and conservatives in the Democratic Party. They talk, of, and, and by the way, Rush Limbaugh has talked both sides of this argument when it's convenient for him promoting right-wing talking points. They argue that there's a limited supply of stuff. Remember zero-sum gain? They do that all the time. But then Rush Limbaugh also encourages people, like when he used to do his uh, Snapple uh, radio ads, into, weave it into his program, he would talk about Snapple and mm-hmm. the working class values of the company, and there's plenty to go around. Don't, don't listen to the Democrats or, or Libs. And I don't recall Libs saying there's a limited amount in terms right. of uh, popula- population. But the other thing is they also talk about how the Dems have open border policy and that we have no uh, system for immigration. Yeah, we do. Uh, we see it every day. The Republicans version. They want, they like, they desire these workers to come here to fight their way up through all the different borders of, of the countries south of the border, to fight their way to get up to Mexico and then get themselves a coyote if they need to, do whatever they can, deplete their life savings in order to get smuggled here illegally. Okay, they like that because they know that once these people make it here, they've proven their metal. They love that. They love when you prove your metal. That's their version of pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. And they know that once you get here under those circumstances, you're not likely to be calling the cops when your boss doesn't pay you. Or doesn't exactly. Pay you the- that is the immigration policy that we have. Thank you, Republicans. You all used to say, thanks a lot, Obama. Well, guess what? Thanks a lot, Trump. Thanks a lot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot, Grassley. Thanks a lot, Marble Mouth. You guys are the reason why we have the Supreme Court in disarray. You guys and the centrist Democrats who are too wussy to stand up to them and do the mandate that we gave them long ago. So- well, I mean, the, the thing about it is, um, like I said, people, when people are in dire straits, Johnny, there's nothing that's going to stop them from making the attempt to come in. And the funny thing about it is while we concentrate on watching all those folks coming over on the, by the, through the, the southern border, most of the people here undocumented came through the avenues of the hundreds of airports that we have. They come through Canada and they come through other means. So, I mean, it is, it, it is, such, a, it is such a disingenuous way in which we look at immigration right now. And, and, and again, there, uh, we are a huge country uh, with a very, with, with, compared to other places with a fairly small population. Even though we have 330 million people, we are a fairly big country and with a huge output. So uh, this, this is something that's just used for political gain. Anyway, anything else you want to add, Brother Johnny? You know, there's a one other component, and now it's slipping my mind. <laughs> if it comes back to me, I'll call you back real quick and add that in because it's a, it's a key piece. Thank you, Brother. When you remember, give me a call back, okay? I'll do that. Take care now. Anyhow, folks, uh, that was the one and only... Johnny, anybody else want to call? 713-526-5738, extension number two to speak on air, 713-526-5738, extension number one to donate. As well, you can donate at kpft.org. Because I haven't gotten the support yet, the contributions yet, let me just say one thing here um, to try to urge you on to give us a call to support the show. You know, we sit back very often and we talk about, we, we talk about things not changing or we talk about our brothers and sisters on the right. How, how can they think this way? How can, they, how can they think in such a manner that it materially affects your life, my life, and others? We ought to learn. We ought to know that these, our right, our neighbors on the right, I'm coming to you, Jack, in a second. Our neighbors on the right, 
These are not bad people. These are people who get their information from that happen to be a source of bad information. Lucky for us, we get information from the right points of view, meaning the ethical points of view, the moral points of view. Some don't. A politics done right is here to inform. And you know what? Both on the internet and elsewhere, we have a lot of conservative, we have a lot of right-wing listeners. We have, it is important that we are around to help inform. I'm not saying we're going to be the only one. We're not. But it's important to have us around to inform. So please be a part of it. Please help us continue to be able to do this. 713-526-5738. You will be doing your part. You would be doing the right thing. You'd be saying, I am part of making this country better because I am part of ensuring that information is out there. So please give us a call at 713-526-5738, extension number one, to support the program, extension number two, to be on air, or go to kpft.org, go to kpft.org, hit the donate button, and please be sure, whether you call or come in via the, the website, please be sure to let folks know you're here to support Politics Done Right. Jack Van Beber, talk to me. Good morning, Egberto. Good morning, sir. How are you doing? I'm, do- I'm doing well this morning. Uh, you know, this migrant issue is, you know, this is these are people. Right. These are people that, you know, our foreign policies have gone down to their countries and, you know, placed sanctions on their countries. They give them loans, which, you know, in, you know, basically embroil them in debt. So they use austerity on the people and keep them dirt poor so we can, you know, we can extract their resources on the cheap. You know, then, you know, they're they're looking for a better life. And basically, they're being driven this way, you know, for a better life. And to be able to feed their families and, you know, this, they're being exploited by this and driven up here. And then, you know, they're taken advantage of in all kinds of ways. You know, we need, we need the labor. You know, Jack, you know, I, I don't know you, you, uh, you just hit, and Johnny, I'm coming to you in a second, but Jack, you just hit something that is so important. I hope you realize it. When you say we flood them with debt, in other words, we ensure that that state is a failed state. And because these countries don't have sovereign currencies, let's say, let's look at my country that I came from, Panama. We have the, the money called the Balboa. The Balboa is tied, tagged to the United States dollar, right? That means we cannot, we cannot float our money to, get, to, to have a better life for our people, for local goods, etc. We go to countries that don't have foreign currency. When they borrow in dollars, they hamstring their economies. We can borrow an unlimited number of monies here in the United States because we have our own money. We create our own money. And it's, a, it's something that I'll cover in another in another another show because it goes beyond the scope but when you talk about debt john mr john mr jack van beber when you speak about debt you are also speaking about something that is so important for uh what's causing this migration as well sir yeah yeah they you know they they cause it you know and then they use it as a wedge issue against the people you know, they they're they're exciting people to to hate the immigrant. I mean, I live amongst them, so I see it every day. I see the exploitation that goes on with them. Uh, you know, I hear and, you, brother. And it's you know, it, it breaks your breaks your heart to see basically they're, they're beating up on the poor. Well, you know, Jack, that is one of the reasons I urge and, and I'm going to I'm going to tee off of you now to urge our listeners to give us a call or go to kpft.org to support the program because a lot of uh, there are a lot of good people who have bad thoughts because it's been instilled in them from bad people these bad politicians and these bad 
corporations that are lying to their people. So let's go to Johnny. Um, I, Jack, throw Johnny, Johnny on for me. Let's go ahead and um, continue this. Come on in, Johnny. Yeah, I need to start using uh, post-it notes when I make a call. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Johnny, what's up? The, the key piece I forgot was military service. Oh, the Republicans love dangling that carrot out. They say, oh, you do military service, you go to Iraq, and when you come back, we'll get you on the magic jack track to citizenship. Yeah, right this way, back to the border, back to where you belong. You know, the, the Republican Party are the party of mercenary authoritarians, bullies. That's what they are. They are totally mercenary. They are not Christian. I'm a Christian, and I don't even practice anymore. So that's our, that's our uh, immigration policy. We make them struggle and, and so-called cross the border illegally, knowing that they're going to be quite good little workers that can be exploited. And we could also get the, their bodies for use in our military to bolster our military roster. And then we'll just spit them out when we're done. That's how we treat people. That's our foreign policy, and that's our immigration policy. Thank you, Republicans. I've said my piece. Johnny, uh, you, you got to say your piece, Johnny. Thank you so kindly for calling in. Folks, 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713-526-5738. Who will go ahead and take advantage of that $250 contribution so that I can take you out to coffee and we sit down and chat politics or chat whatever you want to talk about. Who will go ahead and call 713-526-5738, extension number one, and say, I want that Politics Done Right t-shirt with that KPFT logo so I can walk around telling folks, check out this show. Let's throw it on to El Brother Reynolds. Come on in, Reynolds. Well, thank you, Egberto. I just wanted to uh, mention that our, our dear friend, Mr. McKinney, is doing it one more time with the bus tour. A donation of $75 gets you a 1.5-hour VIP tour of the historic Herman Park Museum District med center and on uh, houston's only open air school bus so it's an open air bus that you take a trip on and this is really cool for a 75 five dollar donation what a great idea and thank you mr mckinney thank you mr mckinney because our, i know a lot of people would, you know you know what is so interesting um dr reynolds what happens many times is houston is a huge city and I every year I learn something new about this beautiful place or go something someplace new. We have a hell of a city here, and um, just having somebody that can give you a piece of that district, I think it's a great thing. 713 526 5738, extension number one to contribute, extension number two to speak on air. Um, you know something, uh, uh, let me tell you something, Howard. Anytime we are pitching right to folks on the phone, sometimes I think. I don't want to call in now because, hey, I don't care. Like, give us a call. 713. You should. Yeah. You should. Yes. 713-526-5738. Extension one to contribute. Extension number two to also contribute, but this time with your voice on air. 713-526-5738. As well, folks, um, I have another snippet that I need to play to you here, but let me pitch one last time and say, folks. Think about this. You, uh, many of us pay 100, 200. Some people are paying $300 a month for their cable service, internet service, all that kind of stuff every month. Um, I want you to consider this. Imagine if some of you would say, you know what? I'm going to dedicate a small piece, five bucks a month, 10 bucks a month, 20 bucks a month or whatever, a little, little piece every month so that, this great station, KPFT, doesn't have to constantly come every quarter and have these fun drives. Because I want, I want Politics Done Right to be able to dedicate the entire hour to feeding our minds, to us feeding each other's minds. I want to do that, right? But, you know, that, that 100,000 watt transmitter that, that, that Howard was fighting with yesterday to make sure it stays on air. That pop that that fills the airwaves throughout the entire southeast Texas, not just Houston metropolitan areas, but beyond. Think about that. You are a part of that. 
You are a supporter of that. You make a difference in ensuring that these, this can come over the air. And, and we no longer have to talk about why are there only stations paid for by corporations that are misinforming people? Why? 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 Let's bring Eric into the fold. Come on in, Eric. Brother Egberto, how are you this morning? I am doing fine. Talk to me, sir. Well, I'm up here in Minnesota. I'm originally from Fresno, California. I wanted to comment on a couple things. The immigration one, because boy, we, as, as you probably know, we're at the great Central Valley. Um, saw that all the time. In fact, conversation always goes a little bit like this, you know. So especially up here in the Midwest, I've seen the very similar thing. They ship their jobs either down south or overseas. And they say, well, you know, hey, Egberto, you, know, you used to have that good union job at that factory you were working at. And, you know, <clears throat> I see you're unemployed. But see, look, uh, you see that guy over there from uh, Nicaragua? He, um, why is he working at Walmart? Shouldn't you be working at Walmart? I mean, that job should be yours. Boy, isn't, and that's how they get you fighting amongst working class people. Where that guy, that one that's telling you, is the one that shipped your job overseas. And wow. I think what we need to do now is just redirect. It's it's no different than the Central Valley, because we would tell, hey, they're not bringing them, they're not coming up here. It's like you, you know, just to um, emphasize and uh, validate what you guys were saying before. They're not coming up here of their own volition. They're coming up here for a reason. They have people that are either convincing them, selling them a bill of goods. Um, then when they get here, um, hey, they find out, you know what, it ain't it ain't what it's cracked up to be. But um, who are the people hiring them? They're not coming over here at the barrel of a gun, you know, uh, saying, hey, you've got to hire me. No, they're not doing that. People are bringing them here and people are hiring them. And it's not you and me. It's not working class people. And we just need to redirect that. So, you know, bit by bit by bit, you know, just little quips here and there um, make a world of difference. I saw that, you know, change at the street level um, when I was in Fresno and, uh, you know, different parts of the Central Valley. Same thing up here. They seem to get it a little bit more up here because, look, they're just people trying to make their way. Um, I can't fault them for that. I mean, I don't like it. I don't like the fact that they have to be here on the conditions that they're here. But you know what? I'm not against them because they're working people just like you and me. They have to get up in the morning every day. Who are the ones that we should be, you know, holding to account? It's the ones that don't need to work. I call them the 20th floor people, and anybody, you know, you, you mentioned that phrase to is going to know exactly who, the, who you're talking about. So um, that's one thing. And then some of they mentioned, you know, about like the debt and then whatnot and, uh, you know, steal, debt stealing and all that. Um, the government is not a household, period, the end. That's the, that's the biggest sell job. I mean, again, ask anybody, you know, can, how do you run out of the money that you yourself print? And do you Thank print you. your own money? And the ones that... You know, and the ones that say, oh, yeah, I print, I can print my own money. Then how do you run out of it? You don't. Period. The end. And you can ask them another thing. If you were to get rid of the national debt right now, you know, boom, would you do it? If, if the ones that would say yes, congratulations, you just destroyed basically the world economy and half of everybody's savings. You know, it's always great having having the audience at large who understands this stuff and can come on air and put it out instead of one voice talking, many voices talking. Eric, uh, thank you so kindly for your most thoughtful and correct statement. And especially that, that one at the end as well, as far as we, we, are the, we are the printers of our sovereign currency. And therefore, you're absolutely correct. You, the only, and people say, well, but if we start printing money, it's going to be inflationary. You only get inflation if you have shortages. Our efficiency is through the roof. The problem is those who have been taking advantage of our efficiency are, are the corporate leaders. They get the efficiency we all produce. It, we, we ex you want to say a closing statement before I go to the other subject, sir? Sure. No, Absolutely. Look at, listen to earnings calls. They're telling it to you right in plain sight. Look at earnings reports. Those aren't fake. Business news doesn't lie. And you look at the business press, you look at these guys' um, uh, financial statements, they're making more money than they ever have. That's where all this is going to. It's going up to them. The Rand Corporation uh, did, did a BlackRock. Since the 80s. There you go. 
It's all being siphoned upward. There, that's not a coincidence. Yet we're being more productive. And where is that production going? It ain't going into your, your pocket or my pocket. It's going into these guys that are making obscene amounts of money that if they died today, right now, business still goes on. Because they don't do it. They contribute nothing to the economy. Thank you so kindly, Eric, for, uh, for exactly. coming with that most prescient statement, my brother. No, absolutely. Hey, keep up the good work. Thank you now. All right, let's go to Tag. Come on in, Tag. Yeah, I heard on TV this weekend that lots of times they consider uh, the GDP yes. uh, against the money supply. So as, as our GDP goes up, they print more money. I mean, and if you don't do that, like Bezos making all that money, if you didn't print more money, Bezos would have all the cash available. And I think that's a problem people don't understand about this issue. You know, it, it is amazing, Tag, that, and, and thanks for stating that, but there, there's another thing that people have to realize, right? Uh, we, we have the ability, this debt stuff and debt crisis, all of these things are manufactured, right? Because as lo- money is just a tool, and this is what people don't realize. Money is just a tool so that we can transact. That's all. It's a tool so that we can transact. What it's called, it's a method of abstraction that eliminated the necessity to barter. That's what it really is. It's a method of abstraction. And it's important for us to understand there's nothing magical about it. We print as much as we need. And the only way it becomes inflationary is if you cannot produce the goods that people want. And guess what? We are super efficient as... Eric was t- talking about before, so it's all a sham. But we're running out of time now, uh, Tag, so I'm going to have to let you go. But I appreciate you calling. I appreciate you listening. But we got to close this baby down. All right, brother? Thanks, Alberto. Have a good day. You too now. Anyway, folks, uh, look, um, I first of want to thank you all for listening in to the show. I, I want to thank those of you who are going to give after the show. I know a lot of you want to listen in and you worry about giving later. So when you give, I do ask you when you call in to let them know it is for politics done right. When you go to kpft.org to contribute, please make sure and pull down the politics done right drop down. It is very, very important so that we are appropriately credited to show that this show is uh, that people are, are are supporting this program of truth. This program where you get the truth from me and we get folks here like we had Eric and Tag and Johnny and uh, brother uh, Jack Van Beber and of course brother Howard who keeps all this stuff tied together uh, telling the truth making sure folks are informed. So again uh, the two other subjects that I had on plan that didn't get covered, please go to politicsdoneright.com slash newsletter, and it's covered in the newsletter as well. Tomorrow, we'll have a new subject or new subjects. Please be there with us. My name is Egberto Willis. Please call 713-526-5738, extension 1, to donate. 713-526-5738, extension 1, to donate. And go to kpft.org to donate. Select Politics and Right as the program you are supporting. My name is Egberto Willis. Thank you, Jack Van Beber. Chank, thank you, Howard Reynolds in the studio. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics and Right. And you guys know how I end this, baby. I am what? Out. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.